I was told this was an underground poker game. Well, you boys take your metaphors seriously. Name? Mr. Andrew Jackson. And his twin brother, Andy Jackson. When I come back out this door, Ben Franklin might want to have a word with you. We savvy, big man? <laughs> Is the seat taken? Depends on how much you got to lose. It's the Allen Hour with your host, Allen Covington. Today, Allen welcomes best selling author H.B. Myers. Well, that excerpt was from the first chapter of my next guest's new novel, The Man from Nowhere, H.B. Myers. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Alan. That's it. Thank you. That's it. So, so, Mr. Myers, let, let me jump right in. And, and I, I realize this is a loaded question. It's kind of like asking, um, you know, what's your favorite Beatles song? But out of the uh, 89 novels you've written, I, I mean, did I speak right? 89? I, uh, I think so, but at my age, I can't remember what I had for breakfast. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us. Which is your favorite book you've ever written? Oh, well, I think, uh, I think every piece of art sort of becomes like a child to you, so I, I, I love each of them equally and differently. But uh, I, always my favorite book is the one that I just wrote. Hmm. And so I'd rather not talk about the past right now, but I, I want to focus on The Man From Nowhere. And, uh, Which, by the way, comes out Friday. Yes, it does. Yes, and... Uh, it's really my most personal work, I would say. As you know, Alan, I'm a, I'm a military veteran myself. Military always has had a special place in my heart. Sure. And unfortunately, I think this country has, uh, has failed our military veterans in providing the, uh, the medical attention that they need. And uh, this book, uh, I, I have dedicated this book to a man who who frankly saved my life in 1967, hmm. wow. Sergeant Frank Rogers. I intend to donate all the proceeds from this novel mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to building a, a private medical facility that will help these American heroes, hmm. these men and women, get the, the medical care that they need and, and so richly deserve. If this book does well and uh, the good people in your audience and elsewhere uh, go out and buy it, I- Well, uh, they better. Yeah, they better. If you love America, you better buy my book. What a joke. I met at a fundraiser for a group that helps veterans and their families. Seems to be his new thing. Well, my hope is to partner the coffee business with an organization that might be able to help us raise funds and awareness. And your father said you are the lawyer to come to. Well, I'm not sure how he would even know that. Well, he spoke pretty highly. My suggestion, you. John, is that we set this up as a for-profit. I mean, you're doing all the work. There's no reason why you shouldn't be getting a piece of the action. And you can still help the troops and feel good on the inside about all that stuff. Mr. Myers. Please. Jake. Jake. This isn't a business as much as it's a mission. Have you ever had a family member or a friend killed in the line of duty? I have not. Yeah. That's a phone call you can never prepare yourself for. I can't imagine. And war is a terrible thing. The war isn't over for the ones that get to come home. 
and for many of our veterans, it's just beginning. Your father's done some great things for the men and women. Look, John, invoking the name of H.B. Myers is not going to get you anywhere in this office. I'm sure I can find a lawyer here who can assist you. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. someone to set him up with a 501c and the next time Herb sends somebody over just I don't know give him to Steve okay You woke me up. Uh, Jake. Herb, it's, it's 11 o'clock at night. What are you? It's kind of late for you, isn't it? Yeah, well, the meds make it tough to sleep. <laughs> saw you on the Allen Show. Oh, yeah, you saw that? It was just on in the background. You look terrible, by the way. Oh, well, thank you very much. The makeup girl did the best she could, I think. What do you want? Well, uh, one thing, I sent you a copy of the, the latest book. Did you, did you get it? Yeah. Yeah, it's here. Uh, good. Um, look, I'm really proud of it, this one especially, and I just wanted you to, when you get a chance, I think it's important that, Hey, I met your buddy John about the coffee charity. Oh, well, I really appreciate you helping out. Uh, I, I, I pointed him in the right direction. Herb, I don't, I don't have time for all your hippy-dippy buddies and their causes. I'm trying to make a living, okay. a, a really good living, <clears throat> actually. I mean, you, hey, you should understand that, right? I'm trying to make money, live the good life. All right, all right. I know, I know you're a busy man. Is this a happy birthday call or what? What? I didn't miss it, did I? Not this one. Okay, good, good. I, I thought it was in a couple of days. Tomorrow. Oh, good. Well, I'm just, I'm bad with dates, Jake. I'm sorry. That's, uh, that's all. Um, look, the reason I'm calling, I just, um, I wanted to see if it might be possible for you to make a trip up here to see me. Listen, I now, really Before you lie. tell me that you're too busy, there's, there's very good reason for it. Uh, I was actually going to say that I was going to sing you the chorus from Cats in the Cradle. Uh, Jake, look, the, uh, the oncologist said that I have a couple of months. At best. That's, uh... It's not long. It's really that bad. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's not gonna, not gonna get any better. And uh, I just, I wanted to see you because I, I know, I know we didn't have much of a relationship. And 
Don't. I, I don't blame you for that. I, not, I know that's not your fault. I just... I just want you to know that that not a day goes by that I don't regret all those moments that I missed being your father. And I guess death has a way of making you reflect on your mistakes. I just want to see you. Fine. One question. If you could go back. The late nights, the, the trips out of town, the... the missed baseball games, the months... away writing your books. You didn't even come to my graduation. Jake. If you could go back and, and, and reflect on your mistakes, would you trade all of that? Not to be H.B. Myers' esteemed author. Just be her. Just be my dad. Forgiveness is a powerful thing, Jake. Oh, you are so unbelievable. You can't even answer that, can you? Don't. Yeah, once again, this call isn't about me. It's about you. You're feeling guilty, you're sitting at home alone, and you're trying to manipulate me into forgiving you for my horrible childhood. Again, for never being there. I just want to try to make things right before it's The too past late. is the past. Let's leave it there, huh? I can't, I don't, I, well, I can't argue with you. No, you can't. Because I learned from the best. Jake. Jake, Mr. Patterson has already called five times this five morning. Times. Hi, good morning. It's not even 9 a.m. It's actually quarter to 10, boss. That makes sense. What, what does he need? He wants to know when his case is going to trial. But Jenny, am I bad at my job? No. Don't answer that. I'm incredibly good at my job. Yes. I've told him a hundred times when we're going to trial. You tell him. I will when tell him. When the judge gives yes. us a court date, mm -hmm. that's when we go to trial. All right, perfect. Thank you. I should call him. You should call him. I should call go him. Go ahead, yeah. It, what, what if I text him? Text him. Text yeah, text okay? him. It's easier. Or you email him. I'll email him. You write an email. Yes. What I would say, how you would say it. It comes out nicer mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. And a cup yeah. of coffee? Okay. Yes. Already on your desk. Also. Your RSVP list for your birthday is in the inbox, and the new recruits are currently stewing in the conference room. Perfect. Let them marinate. All right. You're the best, Jenny. Listen up. If your life game plan includes cars, boats, properties, you know what the difference is between you and me? You want those things. I have those things. You don't get success, you take success. Does that make sense? You gotta want it, crave it. Wake up in the morning and pour it on your cereal before you start your day. Your client is 89 years old and on her deathbed. She lived a good life, a long life, a rich life. I say forget her life. Drain her dry, and when she's gone, you go after her trust. You take everything. Does that make you feel bad? No. Good. This guy gets it. How about you? That bothers you, doesn't it? It's okay. You can tell me. I'm sorry, I... Well, I appreciate it. What's your name? Uh, Nicholas. 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 It's a good name, Nicholas. I appreciate your honesty, Nicholas. And I advise you to go work for some nonprofit. I don't think you will be very happy here, Nicholas, because we are not a 501c! We are here for one reason! 
Do you know what that reason is, Nicholas? I'm giving you another shot here, kid. Don't mess it up. Our clients? He messed it up. Money. We are here for money. This is a sucker. I give him two days tops. If he makes it to three, I buy everybody dinner. You're afraid of crossing some ethical oath you took in law school. You go all the way up to that line and you bend it until it almost breaks. Are you afraid of doing something illegal? You are a lawyer! Figure out a way to make it legal. Yeah. Hey. It's a uh, bad time, Jake. Ah, oh, never a bad time for you two. <laughs> Heard your Glenn Gary speech went over well yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, subjective. I only had one leaving tears this time. So. <laughs> um, we wanted to have a little talk with you. You know, Charlie and I were thinking and... It's about the incident again? Uh, not really. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Jake? Oh, um... <clears throat> I, I'm sorry, this captivating conversation's gonna have to wait. That's Jenny letting me know my 11.30's here, so. This is, this is important, Jake, so maybe we could. You guys are coming to my party tonight, right? Um, yeah. Great, let's pick up this talk then. Yeah. Okay. See you tonight. Yeah. Happy Thanks. birthday, partner. Yeah. Say good night, okay? Come here. I did not mean to break up your Mensa convention over there. You're being funny. Okay, well, they are your type. Hot. Shallow. I am insulted. Really? No, not at all. <laughs> so, what did you, uh, what I, did you want to talk about anyway? Oh! I'm sorry. I was just trying to tell uh, you that your partners were looking for you. Yeah, I found them. That's okay. I am Should sorry about that. Thanks, yeah. Jenny. I appreciate it. Maybe, maybe grab Charlie another drink. No, no, no. no, 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 it's no okay. Grab him it's one. Okay. Grab him one. Okay. So if I recall correctly, you two wanted to uh, talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the uh, the partners have been talking. Of which I am also one. Yeah, right. Of course. Of course. Uh, we, the other partners, have been talking. You're always mentioning about going on vacation, right? We think it would be a good idea for you to look into that. He is forcing me to take a vacation. No, 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 no. not forcing. Not forcing. Inviting. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I know I made a mistake. Stop. But I've done what? You I physically asked. assaulted the defendant's counsel. Let's chalk it up to a bad day. I mean, we all have bad days. Yeah, some of us more public than others. Come on, Jake. Okay. 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 I admit. I admit. I was in a lot of stress, both personal and at the office. Jake, it's the drinking. It's my birthday party. <laughs> at work. I see what's going on here. You guys are teaming up on me. No, we're not teaming up. Yeah, ready to are. move on. From the incident or me? It's both. Well, if you're trying to fire me, Charlie, we're just come out and say it. We're not trying to fire you. Yeah, you are. No, we're not. Yeah, you just are. Hey, take listen, easy. listen, take listen. Easy. We've got an NDA right here. We want you to sign it and say that you resigned. That's it. You get a very large check. And we, we get to start fresh. You brought an NDA? Birthday party? Unbelievable. Get out. Jake, just do us a favor. 
Do you a favor? Do us a favor. Do you a favor? I've been doing you a favor since we started this farm. I'm the only partner that has a spine, man. All right, that's it. That's it. That's it. Forget it. Forget it. He's drunk. Did you have a rough night? <laughs> Clearly never spent a night in jail. I appreciate you taking your time bailing me out, by the oh. way. I needed that okay. self Okay, well, excuse you. Someone had to stay at your party. Someone had to clean up, pay the DJ, be responsible, Jake. <laughs> Jenny, come on, you saw what happened. That's not my fault. <laughs> Okay, mm. fine, fine. Maybe I didn't, I didn't help the situation. You did not it help the situation. It was partially my fault. Entirely your fault, actually. It was totally understandable. Okay, this is me taking off my employee hat and putting on my friend hat. Oh, thanks. Your life is a mess, and you don't even seem to care, Jake. Thanks, Mom. Okay, do not be a jerk to me. I just bailed you out of jail. It's under control. What is? You know. I don't, please, enlighten me. What do you have under control? It's under control. Okay, well obviously this isn't going to help your case with the partners. Wait, they're never gonna know. You think you can hide it from Are them? Are you gonna tell them? It's in public record, you know. <laughs> Look who you're talking to. I know okay. how to get around the system, Jenny. If you give me a few days, okay. it's gonna be a slap on the wrist, a few hours of community service, at worst. It's nothing I haven't had to deal with before. Well, do you want me to cancel your meetings today? Push everything a week. Okay, maybe you should take that vacation. Relax a little. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tell them I'm gonna take a week off, but make it clear I am not resigning mm -hmm. and it's of my own volition. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Let me know what they say. As your HR representative, I am here as your advocate. The purpose of this meeting is to find a solution that is beneficial to both you and the company. I made it pretty clear before, if I see this again, I'll sue. Not just the firm, each one of you as individuals. And you know you don't want to be sitting at that table across the aisle from me. Jake, let's just be reasonable. If this is a negotiation tactic, I mean, did you see the sum at the bottom? It's a lot of money. It's not about the money. Never thought I'd hear those words come out of your mouth. Come on, Harry. This firm would have closed up shop a long time ago if it wasn't for me. Respect is a two-way street, Jake. I don't respect you, Charlie. At least I'm not an embarrassment. Gentlemen, please. Uh, Jake, according to the company's bylaws, the firm has the right to ask you to take a two-week leave of absence, effective starting today. Jenny already told you I said I was taking some time off on my own. But we wanted to make sure that you knew that this time off is mandated by the firm. Is that what this is about? Is that why we're here? Some time off? Okay, yeah, I'll tell you what, Harry, I'll shoot straight with you. You've always shot straight with me, and I like you more than I like him. I'll take your time off, okay? I will take your two weeks, effective immediately. Are we happy now? Does that please the court? Can I go home? Are we done here? We wanted you to take this time to really think, to think about your recent issues, and the idea that we have done our best to keep all of these recent incidents in-house, away from the press, and away from our colleagues at other firms. I mean, come on, well, you know how it is in our circles. News travels fast. Bad news travels faster. So, we could keep going round and round, or you could help yourself and, yes, help the firm and sign. I gotta say I'm proud of you, Harry. The birth of a spine. I spent eight years of schooling, forfeiting any kind of social life, to graduate the top of my class at Harvard. When we started this firm, we had two clients. Remember that? Look where we are now. In the last several years, I have successfully delivered over $100 million worth of settlements. The National Law Journal recognized me as the lawyer of the year, twice. 
The American Bar Association awarded me the John H. Pickering Achievement Award. Super Lawyers continually ranks me in the top three in the state of California. How many times have you been in the top three in the state of California? And, and what, you want me to sign on this line and I'm not gonna do it. And you should be thanking me because without me, this firm is nothing. Without me, you are nothing. Do you really think I'm gonna let all of my achievements die because you decided to grow a spine? I think we're done here. And I tell you what, guys, if you leak anything, I'll add defamation to the suit. Okay? See you in two weeks. Oh, and uh, Sherry, I'll probably sue you too, just a heads up. Okay, you can work, Jake, but not too much or too hard, okay? This is your vacation. Vacation is a flawed concept, Jenny. It fosters complacency. That's why nobody's been to the moon in 50 years. I, on the other hand, will be working tirelessly over the course of the next two weeks to show Harry and Charlie what they would be missing if I did, in fact, leave. Okay, that was the wrong answer, Jake. You need to take a breather. You need to relax, trust me. Sure thing, boss. Okay. What is this? Is this from your dad? Yep. Are you going to open it? Nope. Well, aren't you a little bit curious what's inside? It's a book. He sends me all of them. Are any of them good? I've actually never read them. Really? I never wanted to. Certainly doesn't stop him from continuing to send them. However, it's about the only thing that he does send me. There's a whole pile out in the garage if you want to take some home. Okay. Oh, the man from nowhere. It's all yours. Look, the guy on the cover kind of looks like you. You need a book. You're on vacation. You have the time. You need to relax. You know perfectly well there's nothing about my father that will make me relax. Okay, well, fine. I will be at the office, so holler at me if you need anything, but you won't need anything hey, because you will you not actually, be working. I do need something. Those girls from the party, mm, I sorry. gave them office numbers. Okay, so no, so we're throwing those you numbers can... away. No, why? Be nice. <laughs> Just give okay, out. I'll handle give it for Snapchat. you. I don't care. No, okay. Just... Have a good day, Jake. Yes. For Sergeant Frank Rogers and the men of Charlie Company. All right, Herb, I'll give you five pages. 400. You calling? Yeah, Ike. Sure. I'll call. Me too. Yeah. No surprise there. And I suppose you follow suit. I raise. You <laughs> raise? <laughs> I think you meant to say call. You do realize whose game you're at. Now, we are playing poker, aren't we, fellas? Well, yeah. And within the rules of the game, I am allowed to raise, or am I thinking of go fish? Yeah, you don't raise at this table. I got no kick, Billy. This Daisy just ain't familiar with whose table he's sitting at. Uh, uh, I fold. Me too. Egghead tiny? You think you're smart. But you have no idea who I am. Or what I do to people I don't like very much. I'm not interested in your life story. I'm just your next move. Call. Two pair. Three nines. Quite the card player, mister. I ain't here for the cards. Good. Because this money ain't going home with no grifter. I know you boys are upset. 
I can't say as I blame you because you're rotten card players, all of you. Now, by my estimation, I think you guys are gonna reach for those bean shooters in your pockets, but before you do, you better know who I am. And you ain't gonna like my answer. Who are you? That's a valid question, even though I had to prompt you, Joseph. I'm glad you asked it. You're smarter than you look. I don't care what Ike says who about you. Who are you? Gamble. Johnny Gamble. You are D. Johnny Gamble, the detective. You thought I smelled a rat. I told you you weren't going to like my answer. Nick money from every crook he took down. Even took money from his own police department. Nothing worse than a Judas. That's a fair assessment. I recognized my transgressions and I went straight. Even I wasn't past saving. <laughs> Hear that, boys? Crooked copper found religion. <laughs> <laughs> How do we know you ain't lying, Gamble? Well, why don't we find out together, Billy? I know you're not here for the chit-chat or the money, Gamble. So what do you want? Information. <laughs> we ain't no canaries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for my son. Your boy? Your boy don't want to see you. Your boy don't want to be nothing like you. And no good yap. He only knows what I used to be. Yeah. He's running with Herod's crew now. Yeah, now see, that's what I'm looking for. Now we're getting someplace. Where's Herod? Same place you've been for the last five years. Nowhere. Okay, I don't need you doing any work, but I do need some signatures for the Patterson file. So if you could just sign full signature where it's um, in red and then initials in yellow. You started reading it? Yeah. I saw somewhere that your dad's going on a book tour or something. No chance. He told me he doesn't have much time left. He's pretty sick. You talked to him? Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was quick. It was like a, happy birthday, here's my latest book. That kind of thing. Okay, well, at least you're talking about something. He wants me to go see him. Well, you are on vacation. You don't get it, Jenny. It's always about him. It's always an ask. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. I'm still working on the donuts from earlier. Herb. What are you doing here? Am I good to go now, Mr. Myers? Yes, you no. are. No, no, why are you here? See, I told you he was gonna be like this. <laughs> did you, did you break him out of the hospital? Well, I did most of the work, but he was very well compensated. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, sir. You can go. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Help me out here. <clears throat> Come on, let's go. It's cold out here. Do you want a drink? Because I'm going to have like 50. I don't really drink anymore. It seems a little bit early for that, really. That's right. I keep forgetting you're a new man since you found God. Well, maybe if I'm around long enough, I can prove that to you. Is that a joke? Because I, I can't tell if you're trying to be funny or what right now. You seem a little grouchy. I think you might need a second. Why don't you just show me to my room and uh, I'll get a little rest. Show you to your room? Yeah, yeah, I won't. Uh, wow. I sleep most of the time anyway. Wow. I won't bother you too much. I mean, I can see how busy you are. All right, sounds good, Herb. Nap time. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
You awake yet, Johnny boy? You telling me this sap is the same guy that got the drop on Benny's team in Chicago? Smoked all of his boys. This guy? Nah, Joe. That was a different guy. This is the new Johnny Gamble. <laughs> I like my odds. Four on one, you dumb mug. You really live up to your name, Gamble. Five on one, that guy counts twice. I want to put a pill square in the temple of this Palooka right now. Somebody tell me why I don't do that. Sending word to Herod? You know he'll pay top draw for Gamble. You know he's going to want him alive, Ike. Maybe a couple large? You tell Herod to get here. You tell him to bring my son. He's not coming here so you could play patty cake with your son. <laughs> he's coming here to bump you off. You know good fake. It's a risk I'm willing to take. You know what your problem is, Gamble? You think you're the one teaching the lessons, not getting them. Who's the eggs and butter man around here, huh? You are, Ike. That's right, I am. And here's the thing. I don't want Herod's money. I got enough cabbage. No, I got a better plan. A lesson you'll never forget. What you thinking, boss? I'm gonna deliver you to Herod, all right. And then I'm gonna shoot your son right between the eyes. And you're gonna watch. I'm the law. <laughs> I can't do this. This guy's pathetic. You know what? Boys, go ahead and shoot Gamble. Herod will be happy as a clam. And I'll still ice his son for fun. You want to kill me? Go ahead. What are you waiting for? Kill me! The minute you threaten my son, I'm the law. Lesson learned. I want you to tell Herod that I'm coming for him. You hear me? You tell him Gamble's coming for him. I could have just come by your house. No, no. Why? You could not have because there is a self-proclaimed reforming absentee father in a wheelchair currently taking a residency there. Yeah, I should have known you put him up to this. Okay, he no. would have never thought to come see me. All I did was reach out to his agent. He had to break out of the hospital on his own. Oh, you're so fired. I think it's amazing. Yeah, only because you didn't grow up with him as his son. Jenny, we're talking about a guy whose fondest memory of me was sending me off to school on the other side of the country. So when you say it's amazing that he showed up randomly on my front porch and wants to pretend like everything has been fine for the last 30 years, I don't get that. I'm gonna give you some advice. Jake, he's gonna be gone and you're too busy being a selfish child to even listen to him. You've said that your dad has been too proud to be proactive, and now the ball is in your court, Jake. So you can either talk to him, or you can be this whole, like, father, like, son thing. I'm not like him, Jenny. Well, so what do you think so far? Yeah, well, it looks like you dedicated it to a Sergeant Frank Rogers. No, I've never had a book dedicated to me, but some guy I've never heard of gets one from you. Sergeant Rogers saved my life back in way in Vietnam. I thought you were supposed to be the war hero. Or is that just how the media played it out for your last press tour? Rogers was the man who introduced me to Jesus. 
that long ago. Where was that Jesus when I was growing up, Herb? He's supposed to be a loving, selfless father, right? Full of grace, hope, love. Roger planted the seeds. That's, uh, he made the introduction to the Lord, and I'm not proud that it took 40 years to take root. I can't give you back your childhood, Jake. We're just going to have to find a way to go on from here. The least you could have done was dedicate a book to me. That book's not dedicated to you. It's written for you. What? I wrote it for you. I mean, you know I'm not good at opening up. It's not how men were back in my day, but uh, I'm good with a pen and some words. And so I wrote a story to try to show you the lengths that a man would go to to find a son that he lost. You wrote this for me. Nobody else. The New York Times, the paycheck. Oh, God. I'm donating all the money I make from that to a veteran's charity. I'll just keep reading it then. Read it out loud. That'd be music to my ears. The one on that slab is Ike Capra. He's the head Pella. His associate, Joe Giganti, two doors down, Billy Gallo, bottom drawer. Cole Gamble, I wanted you to see this. You've done some top-notch work for my crew. I trust you've been happy? Yes, sir. Feels like family. That's good. I like that. Oh, Gamble. My father always used to say it's best to work with people you like, people you trust. Am I right? I like you, Cole. You know how to use the old grape. You got a good head on your shoulders. But when you work with people you like, you open yourself up to betrayal. You like them, so you don't see it coming. Fortunately, my father, he learned that lesson the hard way. A business partner. Loved him like a brother. Even drank from the same bottle. Ha <laughs> ha. Who knew? <laughs> and then one day, he found out this man was not a friend at all. Tried to work it out, give him another chance. But you can't reason with a traitor. Can't be done. Can't do it. It cost him everything. His business, his home, his life. Now, had it been me, wouldn't have been a second chance. Wouldn't have happened. I would have hunted him down and took back everything that was mine and maybe a few things that weren't. Of course, it's when my old man said I could never keep friends. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? What's that gotta do with me? Your father, the two-faced gumshoe, filled these three gents full of daylight. Johnny Gamble's not my father. Never was, never has been. Are you sure? Because when we find him, we're going to kill him. Slowly. Painfully. And I don't need any tears or changes of heart from you. You understand me? This man murdered my friends. And he never cared. 
cared about you. You're more of a father than he ever was. There you go. Yeah. Makes sense to me. I just want to be sure, though. When we find him, and he pulls a gun, you got my back? Of course I have your back. Trust me, the hooch ain't gonna make it better. Don't you have a son to find? Well, I just thought I'd take a breather before I dust out. Well, feel free to dust on out. I thought I might get dip the bill first. Whiskey? Water if you got it. I don't. Well, then I think I'll pass. You enjoying the journey so far? It's not bad. It's not bad. It's no Raymond Chandler, but it's not bad. Well, it's not my character to impose, so I guess I'll just be on What, what, what happened between you and your son? Because the book, it, 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 it it doesn't say. A lifetime of mistakes. Any words of wisdom for me? You are talking to the wrong guy. Because I'm in a similar situation with my own father. That's why I was asking you. I was hoping you could shed some light, but apparently that's too much to ask for. Uh, a family can be a busted flush. I'm trying to make sense of it, you. Wind up behind the old eight ball. What are you dying or something? Why else, why else would you go look for him after all these years? Well, I did him wrong. I'm not proud of it, so I'm fighting hard to make it right. Well, brother, fair warning. Because it does not look like your boy wants to be found. That's so why it might not go well for you. Every lost son longs to be found by his father. Not all of them. Well, see, now it sounds like you have a lot of built-up hate towards your father. Think that's just? That is my father. I am his son, and he has never told me he loves me. So you know what? You can burn it out. Thanks for the chit chat, kid. Are you bringing me tea? <laughs> Bet that's decaffeinated, too. You really don't like me, do you? You can't have coffee, Herb. It'll mess you up. <sighs> Jake, I got a couple of months at best. I think I can have a cup of coffee if I want one. Okay. Thank you. So whatever happened to your Sergeant Rogers? You know, I lost track of him years ago, decades ago. How do you let someone who meant so much to you just walk out of your life? Well, he was a good man, and I wasn't. So maybe I was just embarrassed or didn't feel like I measured up. Or maybe I just didn't understand grace maybe, yet. Maybe you were chasing too hard after the things in life that don't matter to make good on your relationships. Well, there's no question about that, Jake. How are you doing with that, son? How are you doing in your relationships? Are you chasing things that don't matter? How are you going to sit here and say that to me? You show up on my doorstep and think that 
that writes 30 years of you just being gone? Where were you when mom needed you? Come on, Herb, where were you when I needed you? I'm not here to defend myself, and I'm not here to question your life choices, but I want you to question them. I want you to question them before you're 67 years old with colon cancer hooked up to a machine that's keeping you alive. What? If you weren't dying, would you be here right now? Well, I'd like to think so. At least the coffee didn't kill me. You got someone here to see you. Well, something for you and the kids. Why don't you get lost? Find some business to do. Hey, they're gonna let you bail me out of here? Not this time, kid. What do you mean? They got popped, making too much noise. I, I was just collecting money for you. I didn't take any juice off the top, I swear. I wouldn't do that to you, Herod. Uh, it's bigger than that. You got all the badges in this town on the take. All you have to do is say one word and I'm out of here. Racketeering, it brings the feds and they're sniffing. What are you doing? No loose ends, tying you back to me or my crew. Herod, no, please. Sorry it has to be this way, kid. Business trumps family, you know that. Good night, Herb. Good night, son. Harry, no, please. Sorry it has to be this way, kid. Business trumps family, you know that. See, the thing is, you ain't his family. Well, well, how about this? A gamble family reunion. Cole, I've been looking for you, son. You don't have a son here. Just a shell of a boy who don't want to be around you, and that makes two of us. It's been five years. How'd you find me? By telling myself every day that I wouldn't stop until I did. Cole, listen to me. Listen to me, the way I treated you, the way I treated your mother, it wasn't right. I wasn't a stand-up guy. Now, I can't fix the past, but I can fix the future, and I'm begging you. Before the Lord, I, I beg your forgiveness. Message of redemption. Last-ditch effort of the weak-minded. He wants to see your wig split. He's been begging to watch you die like the dog you are, Gamble. If love comes from the end of a barrel, then so be it. Take it. Take it. Go ahead and shoot. You ruined me. Abandoned me. You think you can waltz back into my life? You think it's that easy? Nothing about this is easy, Cole. But if it's the last thing you ever hear me say, I love you. I'm sorry. I was wrong about you, Cole. You got some moxie. Go ahead. Pull the trigger. Go ahead. I'll push to get you out of this bird, kid. Come on. Pull it! Go on, pull it! Sorry, kid.
How are we feeling, Herb? You sure you're up for this road trip? Uh, where are we going? Three hours, that's all you need to know. Three hours? You misjudged Judy. I'll record it for you. You went potty, right? <laughs> what? Potty? potty? Yeah, I mean, it's leather yes, seats. I don't Dad. want an accident. Not a child, you know. You are wearing diapers, right? Get in the car. I don't want to be late for wherever we're going. So is this it, Dad? We're finally here? Almost there. I'm guessing it's an in and out. <laughs> No, but I'll buy you a double-double on the way home, I promise. But we need to pray for the love of God and grace to be given to us as was given our Savior when he faced temptations too. Well, hi. You boys here for the class? Uh, yes, sir. Are you Frank Rogers? You military? No. But this man is. You look really old. <laughs> Not as bad as you do. <laughs> I want everybody to know that this man right here saved my life. He's more than just an author, he's a friend. Our platoon was a part of the Operation Cedar Falls. And our main objective was just one thing, and that was to go in and try to destroy the Iron Triangle. That meant 30,000 men were going to descend on the Viet Cong one time. All of us knowing that probably we weren't going to make it out. I'll never forget that night. The smoke was so thick you could not even see your hand in front of you. The bodies were laying before us, all bloodied and bruised, and the, the men who were soldiers with us on either side, they were crying out, screaming for help. You know, times like that, something inside you dies, and you don't know if you're going to go crazy. But I trusted God would be with me. And I trusted that the Lord would see me through. They took us by surprise one night. We never seen them coming. They tricked us. And they caught us. We'd spent five days in cages. No food, just rainwater. And out of nowhere, this man started digging. And we couldn't understand what he was doing because we're thinking, what is he doing digging in the middle of this place? And all of a sudden we realized, you figured out that if we could just dig deep enough, then maybe, just maybe we could get out of there. And so we all started digging. We dug with our bare hands and we clawed it out. It's like the great escape. Yeah. Yeah, we even uh, gave ourselves code names, you know, so the VC wouldn't know our real ones. Mine was Bronson. I kind of figured you would coin yourself McQueen. Ugh, well, taken. <laughs> yeah. He does seem cooler than you. Oh, no. Everyone else had given up. Your father single-handedly dug till finally there was a way of escape for us. I'm here because of him. I didn't do it by myself. And I want to tell you all a little story about how this man saved my life. But I expect that since y'all spent some time with him, you already know what I mean.
You're a good man. Don't you forget it. Thank you for today, Jake. Yeah, no problem. <clears throat> Listen, I gotta get back to work tomorrow, but I can leave some cereal out or something on the counter for breakfast. Oh, you don't have to do that. I, uh, I have a nurse coming in during the day, and uh, I can ask her to stay at night, too. It's easier. I can, <clears throat> I can handle the night shift. Okay. Well, that's a shame. She's pretty cute. Did you tell her I was rich? Do you know Mom used to love it when you played that for us? I guess I kind of did too. You want to know why it took 40 years, son? Just so you know, I thought success was going to fill that hole in my chest. It won't. Just keep that in mind. Hey, have you finished that book? Not yet. Well, I got another one that I want you to read. Hey, I, I put it in there on your bed. Sure. Good night, Herb. Good night, son. I'll be in around 10.30. Okay, you had me schedule you at 9.30 today? Uh, just push it. I don't know. It's Gary Sullivan. He only wants to talk to you. You know how much he pays for his yeah. company's retainer? Yeah. Um, you know what? Push it. I'm making breakfast for her before I come in. Okay, well, that is absolutely worth pushing for. Thanks, Jenny. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, and I'll have your coffee on your desk ready for you. Uh, I got some here, but thank you. What? Okay, I'll see you in a few. Bye. Herb, I got some eggs here for you. Breakfast of champions. Come on, wake up. Hey, Herb. Herb, wake up. Let's go, you can't stay in bed all day. Get up. Herb. 
Herb, come on, wake up. Herb. Someone once said that good decisions come from experience. Experience comes from making bad decisions. He wasn't trying to fix all the wrongs. He was just trying to do right with the time that he had left. What are you going to say to your son now that you found him? You tell me. I didn't read the end. Why not? I think it would only ruin it. Hey! What would you say? You know what I would tell my son? Let it go. Let it go and get right. Nothing more important to me than you getting right. Take it from an imperfect father. I was a terrible father and you know it. But you know what you deserve and you know what I deserve. I would do anything to get you back because I love you. God loves you more. He gave his only son that you could live. You have a perfect father. Unto him, this is life and death. Let it go. Get right. Well, I guess this is where I dust out. I love you, Dad. No, 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 
that, but we changed the rate. Okay. And we changed the just to expand the scope. And the, and this, Jake, Charlie. I'm so sorry. We didn't know you were supposed to be in today. We were it's just okay. using the space to. This office looks good on you. Sorry to hear about your father. Yeah. Thank you, Harry. He was a great man. He was. He did his best with what was given to him. Yeah. Uh, it's probably better that we don't have, you know, personal contact without the mediator, so. I'll sign the paperwork. You will? Yeah. Yeah, I will. I, I could use a break from all of this, and I haven't been the best partner to either of you. And I hope you'll forgive me. Apology accepted. Thank you, Harry. Thank you, Jake. Charlie, what do you say? Yeah. Hey, if you guys ever have any 501c charities come through, you think you can refer them over to me? Uh, that's, that's new. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on some things. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. Well, great. This was helpful. And I hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you soon. Probably not. I don't even, I don't even I have no idea. So why am I here? Because what you're doing can have a profound impact and I did not take you seriously enough the first time. It was my mistake and I want you to know that I'm all in. Like I said before, I don't want this to be for profit. Neither do I. Okay. I've already started setting up the charity. I'll, I'll take care of it from here. I got it covered. It's all on me now. I want to do this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. What's the next step? Well, there's a sergeant running to help group for veterans I would love for you to meet. He served in Vietnam. If you're still looking for those kind of charities to help you out. So what's the time frame look like for us to get up and running? got one more thing to tackle, but I promise you it's a priority. <laughs>